A couple of months ago, I was contacted by a company called Unleashed. Unleashed make a Bluetooth device that sits on the side of your Canon or Nikon camera. And what it does is it enables you to control your camera hands-free from your smartphone. Now they've got a few interesting little things within, within the app itself. And there's also some other things that they're working on. So let me explain what it is that it does. So the Unleashed, what is it and what does it do? Well, it's a small Bluetooth device. It sits on the side of your camera and it allows you to control that camera, be it a Canon or a Nikon, hands-free through your mobile phone. And then basically you can do things such as time-lapse and also they're working on focus stacking. Is it everything that they say it is? Well, there are one or two little niggles. However, they are extremely open to listening to users, the end users, and then adjusting the app for what it is that we need if there is enough demand for it. So I've come here today, actually deliberately today, in the vineyards in the Loire Valley because there's a nice amount of cloud around. And also, as another car passes, and also because there's some really nice cumulus cloud that's around. So what I wanted to do is, is get here when the light is really changeable. And as you can see, even when I'm filming, the light is coming and going. I wanted to get this on film do a time lapse with the Unleashed and see how it is that, that, it, that it performs. So let's get working on using the Unleashed and explain some of those features. And sorry about the cars. Hey, what do you do? It's a Sunday afternoon in the Loire Valley. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to come to this place and it's going to be so quiet. It seems like half the world turned up, but there we go. Anyway, let's get on with the Unleashed. So here's the vineyards here in the Loire Valley. Where are they? Well, just there's some vineyards, don't worry about it. You can see the nice cumulus clouds in the sky. You can see the wind blowing the vineyards there. It's perfect time-lapse weather. I've waited for the opportunity to be able to come out and do this properly to get some really nice time-lapse weather. Now, as you can see, I've got my camera set up. Where is the Unleashed? It's just in there. So there's my L bracket. There's my camera. And in between is the Unleashed plugged into these two different slots here. So what I'm going to have to do is film a different day of a different sequence because there's also the, the bolt, not the bulb ramping, but the time-lapse day to night function with this built into this. And what I'm going to do is do a time-lapse, a day to night time-lapse in the local city of Tours. And what that's going to do is I've got a perfect place that I want to film a day to night. But what I'm going to do here is just set this time-lapse going and actually see how it is that it performs. And also what I'm going to do one of the cool things you can really do is when your time lapse is going, you can alter the shutter speed as the time lapse is going. So for example, say the, the, the sun goes behind a cloud and you can see there is lots of cloud. It won't happen, I guess, probably while I'm doing this initial time lapse. That if I need to adjust the exposure, I can do it on the fly. And that's excellent. So let's show you the benefit of being able to actually just control your camera hands-free. So I'm just gonna go into the Unleashed app if I just tap here, you'll see there's photo, video, time-lapse, and auto ramp. Basically, at the moment, it's not going to work on photo because I've actually engaged the video part of my camera. So if I go back to video, if I then turn on and record a video, so I'm recording a video at the same time I'm recording my screen on my phone. If I go to the shutter speed here, it's on 1 25th of a second. So as I'm talking, I'm going to flick up my phone on one side of the screen and the video on the other and you can see that as I'm talking the shutter speed well I'm not touching the camera with my hands this is all being done with the unleashed so you can see it's getting darker and darker as I'm controlling it there so I'll just put it back to one say one sixtieth of a second so that's the benefit of being able to use the unleashed for hands free so my camera is clicking away doing a time lapse which I've programmed in with the unleashed I swiped up, I got rid of the Unleashed off my phone, and it's there happily clicking away, doing what I've pre-programmed in. The light's pretty uniform as we're, although it's obviously afternoon, the sun is very slowly going down. It's a it's pretty uniform light here. Now there's a couple of niggles for me when it comes to the Unleashed that I want to talk about. Now one of them, for example, is they fixed the number of frames per second in the app to 30 frames per second. Well, I don't work to 30 frames per second. Actually, when I'm doing my time-lapse and then I send them off to, for example, Getty or, or somewhere else, 
I'm using 24 or 23.976. That's my choice to do that. So they fixed that. I wish actually they could unlock that or that what they could do is actually say uh, how many frames you actually want overall. So I normally would choose to do in the daytime 384 frames, which is 16 seconds for a 24 frame per second time lapse. I would prefer to be able to do that. I don't want to be tied down to that. So if you could fix that unleashed, that would be great. The other thing that I want to mention is the fact that you can only download it, the app onto your smartphone. They haven't yet optimized it for a tablet. So I believe, yes, you can put it on a tablet, but it hasn't been optimized for a tablet. Why not? Come on, Unleashed. That's something you really should do. You should really optimize that app for a tablet as well, because I'd like to be able to use my DJI Go app, for example, on my tablet as well as at the same time, the, uh, the Unleashed obviously not at the same time, but you've got just two apps on one tablet that are not having to go between tablet and phone. So I feel that that's something that could be improved there. It's a new device though, so it's, there's always going to be room for improvement. So is it a criticism, a harsh negative criticism? No, it's an observation from my own point of view. Are things, can things be done better? Yes, they can be done better. But, you know, that's why where we come in, the end users. So, for example, email them and say, look, I really need this. Go on their forum. And hopefully what they'll do is in the next release for the app, they'll fix it. Anyway, I'm going to finish doing this time lapse here and then move on somewhere else because I've got some other things to do today. The next time that I'm going to try this app is going to be in the middle of the city doing a day to night time lapse. And we'll see how it fares in the city. This evening I've come to Somia to test the Unleashed. It's the second part of my test for the device to see how it does on the Holy Grail side. So it's going to automatically ramp the exposure from day into night. We're going to see how it is that it does, how it is that you set it up and see if it works or not. And if it does, for me, it's going to be a nice deal breaker. If it doesn't, well, we'll see, we'll see. But let's see how we set it up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is turn on the Unleashed, so I can get it in my phone. So you'll see there at the moment it's set up on 1 50th of a second, F8, ISO 50, so it's set on photo. Let's take it to auto ramp. Hopefully you can see this, because obviously the sunlight is uh, playing around. So algorithm, let's try it on LRT modified sunset beta. So hopefully you can see that there. Right, I want an interval of, I'm going to choose seven seconds. So you can see my interval there. Duration, we're going to do one hour and, I think one hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to do an so the time lapse is going to be so the time lapse is going to be one hour and forty minutes. Night, click on there. So the longest exposure I'm going to want is say five seconds, and then at around ISO four hundred. That should be enough to do my time lapse. Let's set it going. So. As I stand in the sun doing this time lapse of Somia, is it working? Well, it does appear to be ramping. It does appear to actually be auto ramping. The only thing that they haven't done yet is bulb ramping. What's the difference between the, their, their auto ramp and bulb ramping? With their auto ramping, it can only go in one third of a stop segment. So every time it's taking a picture, for example, I started at 1 50th of a second, it's gone to 1 40th. So it's going in those third of a stops ramping the exposure little by little as the light falls as we go from day into night. They are working on, so they tell me, bulb ramping. Well, what's the difference? Well, in bulb ramping, you have to start with a minimum uh, exposure of 1 30th of a second. It, will then, it can then ramp the exposure in increments. I think it's something like 0.00001 of a second when it's 
ramping the exposure, something like that, something crazy. But um, that's from what I remember when I was using my Promote Control. But that's something that's becoming redundant because this is actually doing something I want to. It's kind of taking the strain, really, of keeping an eye on it all the time. Hopefully it's going to work, we'll see. But uh, certainly in the moment, it's definitely doing what it is that I need to. It definitely seems to be ramping automatically. On 1 40th of a second, F8, it's not going to ramp the, uh, the aperture. I don't want it to do that. It's just going to ramp the ISO and the shutter speed. That's all I want it to do. We'll see. Let's let it carry on. When I first started to do time-lapse photography, one of the frustrating things was learning how to ramp the exposure without touching the camera. Or if I did have to touch the camera, it was very minimal. So I got used to very quickly being able to change the shutter speed, the ISO. Certainly when it gets to, for example, I would get to maybe a half a second and then change it down to back to, for example, a quarter of a second from ISO 100, half a second to ISO 200, quarter of a second, just to quickly ramp the exposure. The least takes away that problem, so you're not touching the camera at all. It's, it's doing what it is that I want it to. Is it, when's it going to actually change from ISO 100 to 200? That I don't know. It's on, uh, sorry, it's actually on ISO 50 at the moment, so it's on ISO 50, 125th of a second, so I'll be very interested to see when it actually flicks over, but certainly in the beginning, as I said, when I was doing time-lapse, I think it's 2014 I started doing time-lapse, it's very hard at times to actually get things without camera shake, and you were forever in something like After Effects using the warp stabiliser just to remove any camera shake and stuff like that, so, but anyway, just keep carrying on with it, keep an eye on it, as the traffic goes past here in, here in Somnia. As I said, it's just a little bit frustrating at the moment, there's actually not a lot of cloud, all the clouds actually that way, but it's, there's too much light in the sky to do it what it is that I want. Anyway, let's, let's carry on. One of the good things about the Unleashed is instead of having to use a separate intervalometer to control the intervals for my time lapse, is that it's doing it and ramping all at the same time. Now some people might say, we've got a 5D Mark IV, why don't you use the inbuilt intervalometer and the reason for that is basically I don't want to use any more of the battery time that I need to on that camera so because that's critical when you're doing something like a day to night time lapse where it's going to be on for a good hour and a half or so hour and three quarters so it's still ramping at the moment still looking good I guess we'll see I guess we'll see but what I use seven seconds normally because that was given gave me enough time to be able to ramp the exposure either manually or with my old remote control. And also when you're using an, an external intervalometer, it was giving you a problem where there was a two second sort of delay between kicking in uh, when it was doing on the, all the intervals and stuff. It's kind of hard to explain without doing it in the field, but uh, just take my word for it at the moment. It's actually looking pretty nice. And they said to me, if you like it, keep it definitely think I'm going to be keeping this. It's definitely helping a lot with what it is that I do. Now, if you think of looking at my eyes and thinking, why is it not looking at the camera? Because I'm looking at my camera and keeping an eye on the exposure and thinking, is it doing what I really want to? And it is doing what I want to, which is excellent. So Unleashed have said there are some things coming along such as focus stacking and bulb ramping. When are they going to appear? I don't know. Hopefully I can email them, they can give me some answers on that. But um, as I said, it's certainly a device that the Nikon and Canon uses right now, and there are other camera makes to come. I think it's a, an excellent way to be able to do time lapses, and certainly day to night time lapses. It's taking a lot of hassle away from you, having to use all sorts of other things to try and control the camera with. And it doesn't seem to be taking much battery either having the Unleashed plugged in it's only using Bluetooth so they did say to me if you remember that um, the battery life that it takes is pretty negligible so we shall see we shall see but yeah I'm very very pleased with this very pleased okay so as this is a test I've just found something that you shouldn't do which I could do with my regular time-lapse gear is that I clicked on the preview button for my camera just press the play button 
to look at the image numbers that has been taken. It, it does indicate that on the app, but I wasn't thinking, just clicked it on my camera. What did it do? It actually stopped the sequence. The sequence is still going behind the scenes, but it stopped the sequence. It then quickly took some photos, took two photos, I think it was, to sort of quickly catch up with itself and then quickly change it from an eighth of a second to a quarter of a second and then just for say maybe I don't know 20 photos or so it's slightly overexposed so that's something I'm going to have to bear in mind what I'm doing is don't click the preview button so it's not I don't know if that's something that they can get the the technology to override once once you've clicked that preview button whether it can trigger something to get rid of it but um, yeah that's that's not good overall it is really kind of something that I do like but that's something that really does need looking into that's just something that I do personally at times just to when I'm going through a time that's thinking okay how is it where am I with it does it look okay so yeah just have to bear that in mind definitely don't click the preview button in the middle of a time-lapse sequence with the Unleashed because it's going to mess it up So the Fullography Unleashed, is it really worth spending your hard-earned cash on? Is it really worth getting out your wallet and putting in your credit card details online to get them to ship it over from Germany? Do you know what? Actually, I'd say yes. You know, as somebody that's done a lot of time-lapse over the last six years or so, I would say it's a device that's really cool. I really like what it does. It's not perfect, but nothing's ever perfect. But one of the good things that they do is that you can update the firmware and it is all updatable through Bluetooth and your phone etc so that's one good thing it's only three grams in size in weight it's just such a small device just sits on the edge of your camera there it's fantastic it's just three grams what more out what more can you ask for it's such a, a small weight and as a travel photographer weight is always key to me when I can fly certainly in these coronavirus times it's a bit of a pain to fly at the moment but Weight, you know, weight is always key when you're getting onto a plane, you've got your hold luggage, it's three grams, it's ideal. Being able to control your camera without touching it is fantastic, being able to do that so there's, there's no camera shake. When you're doing time lapse, certainly when I was doing time lapse in my early days, what I wanted to do was engineer out all different things like camera shake and things like this, so you're having to touch the camera to do bulb ramping and every single time there's a tiny movement so which meant going into after effects putting in the warp stabilization this is going to help minimize that always try to engineer out things that are going to harm your time lapse sequences the fullography unleashed helps you by doing that it helps because you're not touching your camera anymore the holy grail function it works just perfectly for me certainly it works how I would normally do my holy grails either with the old device that I was using or when I was having to do it manually in the early days it's there it's ramping the exposure for you it's brilliant what it does I, I can't praise that enough having tested it a few times it just every single time it seems to work and they're always trying to improve it anyways because they're able to do that through the app and then being able to get it into the Bluetooth device so it's, it's really really good being able to do that and as I've mentioned several times the firmware being able to just update it through your app and then getting that into the the Bluetooth device that sits on your camera the, the unleashed it just makes it such a flexible little device however is it all fun and games is it absolutely perfect no let me just take you through a couple of the not negative I would say but things that could be doing with improvement and I know from talking to them things are on the move and some of these things will be sorted out that I do know let me just explain some of the the things that I found a bit of a downside to it 
At the time of recording this vlog, this review, one of the things you're not able to do, which I really actually do need as somebody that does a lot of time lapse, is to be able to specifically dial in the amount of frames that I want. So for example, I'm not talking about the frames per second, 24, 25, etc. I want to be able to say, I want a time lapse that is 24 frames per second at 384 frames. Yes, that's very specific, but I do stock photography. Apparently, it's on the way. I don't know if that's been released or not. So at the moment, from what I can see, I don't like being able to go over what it is that I need or under frames when you're out in the field. And if certainly if your memory card is starting to fill up, those, that space on your memory card is so important. So not being able to change the frames you need for your time lapse, that's a bit of a downer at the moment. I know it is going to be fixed at some point, but yeah, at the moment, no, it's a, a pain. Currently, the Fullography Unleashed is only available for Canon and Nikon users at the time of this review. Now, I know that they are working on other camera models and makes it, but it's not there yet. So at the moment, it's very limited just to Canon and Nikon users. It's a tiny thing, but there's no focus confirmation. I'd love when I'm using the photo side of the Unleashed to be able to just quickly tap on it and go, right, yes, I want my focus there. So for example, if I put my camera on the roof of my car and I can see the live view, I've got everything there, but I can't quite reach the shutter release button. I'd love to be able to just quickly tap on the app and go, yep, click, half press, make sure it's then focused on the camera and then click again to release the shutter. The last thing that I can think of that is maybe a little bit of a downer for some people is that you are going to have to, to buy some piece of software to actually help you with the smoothing out of those holy grail time-lapse images that you're going to take because it is doing it in third steps, third of a stop steps, as it's actually getting longer and longer going from day into night or shorter and shorter from night into day. Most people use LR time lapse in order to be able to fully realize their Holy Grail time lapse. So, yeah, it's, uh, I can actually put a, a, a link in the description to the Holy Grail software, the, uh, the LR time lapse. So, you are going to have to buy another piece of software to fully do your Holy Grail. I think at some point they're working on sorting out the actual and real bulb ramping where you put your camera on bulb mode and then it will very, very, with small increments, ramp your exposure from 1 30th of a second to whatever it is that you want to. But that's, you know, that's it. It is an excellent device. I do really like it. And they said to me, you know what, if you like it, keep it. Certainly, I would definitely keep it. Um, it's, for me, I'm just looking at it and thinking, this is really, really cool device. It really does what it says on the tin. And I'm just going to quickly say that in the early stages of this vlog, I was saying the, a company called Unleashed, the company is Fullography. That's just me just uh, m mixing up my words and not thinking straight at times. But yeah, the company is called Fullography. The device is called Unleashed. I'll put everything in the description. But I hope you like what it is that you've seen. I hope you think that the Unleashed is actually worth buying. In the moment, last time I looked, they've got an offer on. It's 100 euros, I think it was, to be shipped from Germany. Don't know what the shipping charges are, but again, let's look in the description for the, the link to the Fullography website. But again, as I said, I hope you like what it is that you've seen. Don't forget to subscribe down there. Click on the notification bell up there for any new vlogs that I'm putting out. And I'm putting out two a week at the moment for my sins, trying to do as much as I can with the weather. You can see behind me that's not great even today. So uh, in any case, see you on the next one. Stay safe and see you again soon somewhere in France.